Day four, giant squid. Bingo. The numbers that are called. Player cards. We have to, in part one, find the first card that wins. And in part two, we have to find the last card that wins. So we're just going to find all the winners. We'll show all the winners. This section shows what happens with the three boards. If these five numbers are drawn, they're shown in bold if they've been matched. And then here they show the case where finally 24 is drawn and then that makes a win for this card. And unlike in the bingo games I've played, there's no matching on the diagonals, just horizontally and vertically. And then you need to calculate the so-called score of the winning board, which is done by summing all the unmarked numbers. So let's say this one wins, then you go sum up 10, 16, 15, 19, and so on. And then multiply that by the, the last number called. The number that was called when the board won. All right, let's see how I solve this. I made a card class to handle the details of each card. I have a function to solve both parts that solves, you just run it once and it solves both. It finds the first winner and the last win, winner. So it solves both part one or part two. Uh, let's go here first. Here, we are reading the text, stripping off the final carriage return, if there is one, splitting it on pairs of new lines. Here's the test data. Um, every line is separated with a new line. And where you see blank lines, you could think of, of us as having four groups here that are separated by pairs of new lines. So it's convenient to split on pairs of new lines, and then we'll get a list that has this, 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 and this. And we call those input groups, those four input groups. And then the first part, the first, uh, the picks come from the first part here. So if we take this and we split this on commas, now we'll have a list of integers that are the picks, and that's this. And now we want to make a slice off of the input groups to get the card data groups. So it's kind of like just saying, hey, we're only going to consider this although it's not exactly in this form. And then we build the cards. So here we have a list comprehension that instantiates a card object from the card class for each card data in card data groups. And remember card data groups is a list of the strings, these four strings, this a string. So this creates a list of cards, and we'll look at the details of cards in a minute. Then we have to have a way to keep track of... Oh, this we don't need anymore. I made some changes recently, so this is not used. Okay, good. Um, right, yes. This, I don't even need the zip anymore. Good. Yeah, as I went through and discovered things about the problem, I found there was code that I added that I no longer need, and this looks like part of it. Let me just make sure this still runs. Yeah, so with the test data, the first winner came from that pick of 24, and the score is this. So the changes I just made here didn't break anything. All right, we've got all our cards, we have our picks, and now we're gonna process the picks. So for every pick, we're going to go to every card. 
And if the card has not already been identified as a winner, then we'll do this block of code, which consists of calling card.update, which will update a card from a pick and return a Boolean telling whether the card now wins as a result of this pick. If the card wins, then we compute that unmarked number sum. Um, remember, um, you find the winner and then you got to go through and sum up all the unmarked numbers, 10 plus 16 plus 15 plus 19 and so on. So that computes the unmarked number sum, stores it in a variable, and then we print this winner, the unmarked sum, the pick, and then the product of those two, which is the score. Okay, so we've looked at everything but the card class. So let's look at that now. Here's the card class. Each card has data stored with it. The numbers on the card, um, kind of like a two-dimensional array here. Um, and then another instance variable for the hits. So keeping track of which numbers have been matched. And then a simple Boolean that indicates whether this card is a winner. Okay, when we create an instance of the card class, the dunder init method runs. It's called dunder init. Dunder is short for double underscore. Dunder init gets called and we give it the input that looks like like this, one of these cards. So like what I have highlighted here. And the first thing we do is create this list of list of the numbers, this sort of two dimensional array of the numbers. And we do that by first splitting the data by new line. So that's going to give us five strings. And then for each of those strings, for each of those lines of five numbers, we're going to split it and map it into integers. Um, let me just show you what self numbers looks like when we run to this point. That might make it a little bit easier. Um, so self numbers is a list of lists. So where it used to be a single string containing new line separated lines or rows, now it's a list of lists where the nested lists are lists of integers. Okay, so that's what self, uh, that's what numbers look like. And now hits, I might as well just advance here and you can see what hits looks like. Hits is a data structure of the same shape as numbers, but it's got Booleans in it that just store whether or not there's been a match at the particular location. And then we set is winner to false. And then we return to the place where we instantiated the card, which is this uh, list comprehension here. Okay, so I'm going to interrupt the debugging session and close that and go back to where we were looking, which is the dunder init method. So we've explored the, the init method of card. Let's keep going. Um, for each pick, we call update for each card. And what update does is this. It just does kind of an inefficient search across the rows and columns until it finds the cell that matches the pick, if it, if it exists. If it does, then we record the fact that we've found a match in the hits list. And then we call is winner, which I'll look at in a moment, to see if the card is now a winner. And we save that in the in the field is winner here. 
we immediately return. We stop searching. So we leave these, these two loops. If we go through all rows and all columns and don't find the pick, then we return false, saying that there's no winner here. Okay, the last thing to look at is is winner. And is winner consists of this function that I'm going to hide for a minute. And it returns, here's a kind of complicated expression, something or something. So if either of these two expressions are true, then is winner will return true. So to win, you just have to have a completed row or a completed column. And that's what these expressions are doing. Let's see if we can um, make sense of this. Well, any says if any of the elements of the sequence that you provide are true, then the any will return true. So what's the sequence of things we're making in here? Well, here we've got a generator expression to generate those things. Well, what are those things? Well, here's this condition. Sum of self hits row equals five. So um, self hits row gives you a list of all the columns in that row. And if you sum them up, and if they all have been hit, then that equals five. If there are five trues in there, then that means that this is true. So for, for all five rows, see if all the columns sum to five. The values in all the columns in that row sum to five. And if it's true that for any row, the sum of the cells in that row is five, then this any returns true. Okay, so that's for finding the completed rows. For finding the completed columns, it's a little bit more complicated. We do, we, we, we loop over the columns instead of the rows as before, but then we've got to do something a little more complicated. We need to know whether the, the column has been selected. So let's go into here. This, this function is up here. So is the column selected? And we give it a column index. And what this does is looks in the hits for all rows with the column you're interested in. So, and then it asks, um, is the sum of the hits in all rows for the selected column five? And that's is winner. Uh, oh, it looks like there's one more thing to look at. Unmarked number sum. So you remember uh, once we find a winner, we have to compute the unmarked number sum so that we can multiply it against the pick to get the final score. For all rows and all columns within those rows, if there has not been a hit there, take those numbers at that position and sum them. That's what this does. That's day four, giant squid. I'm doing a lot of these advent of code problems with my private students and they really, really enjoy it. See my website if you're interested in being one of my private students. So long.